rent or back utility that's owed. It can also assist with forward rent and forward utility payments. Diane Yantel is with the National Low Income Housing Coalition, which advocated for this kind of funding, but explains the new rental assistance comes with very specific qualifications for renters in need. They have to be at 80% or below area median income, and localities are required to have a preference for people who are at 50% or below area median income. In addition to income qualifications, renters also have to prove a risk of becoming homeless without assistance and have to actively search for a rental assistance program in their area, which could vary widely depending on your state. Early on in the pandemic, there were some funds uh, made available to states and localities to create emergency rental assistance programs. So we've been tracking those programs. At last count, there were about 520 of them across the country. About 30% of those programs have already shut down because the resources have been depleted. Renters in states and localities where there are existing rental assistance programs still in place, they will have access to the rent relief first, while those in parts of California, Alabama, Georgia, West Virginia, and Tennessee, where programs have closed or never existed, they will have to wait until a new program is created. So on our website at nlihc.org, we have a map and a data database of all the emergency rental assistance programs that exist now. We'll continue to attract those, so that might be a good place for viewers to look. They can also call 211. It's unclear how quickly the $25 billion will run out, but most organizations like Yentel's are almost sure it's not enough, estimating more like $100 billion could be what is needed to get all struggling renters through this pandemic. I'm Alicia Nieves reporting.